Good morning. It's 1.41 right now in the morning. I got up at 1 o'clock, groggily grabbed my things, got dressed. You probably can see me dressed right now in my snow pants. I've got some under the snow pants pants, as well as some tights underneath those pants, long wool socks. I have three layers of shirts and sweaters, long sleeve, thermals, just to stay warm. I'm heading out right now, heading south of where I live to find some good dark areas for some astrophotography. I'm going to try a couple places that I've never been before, and I'm going to try some places that are actually in light pollution and see what happens, see if I can get some good shots with that and take you guys along for a photog adventure. So good early morning, crack open a hot chocolate packet, pour it into some hot water and let's, let's get going. County where there's tons of people living right off the side of a lake Utah Lake and people are all along the bench of these mountains and so we really don't have open areas between cities we have city upon city upon city the borders the changes the transitions between each city are non-existent you're just in a next city everywhere you go you have to just kind of pay attention to the map to see what city am I in right now. The first stop is gonna be over here in Payson. I can already see the Milky Way out my window, even with what is most likely orange to yellow to green area, I'm still seeing the Milky Way out my window. Got out to the middle of the field right here next to the temple and I captured an image just to test it out. See if the Milky Way would actually show as well as the temple. Am I in an area that's too bright? Will the Milky Way be nothing? Will there be no detail at all? So I did a capture real quick to see what it looks like. So check this out. With 15 seconds of exposure, look how much of the Milky Way is showing already. So with that much Milky Way, the potential for this shot is there. So what I'm going to do is go around the temple to the east, uh, west side. I'm gonna go to the west side and see if I can find a location I can shoot from where I can get that Milky Way arching over this temple. Okay, let's go look for it. So I'm on the left side of the temple now, the north side, and it looks like I'm looking straight at the Milky Way right over it, so let's go get my shot. That shot went really well. I'm excited to see what it looks like back on the computer because the LCD screen showed me a nice shot. The issue is, is that I had to shoot through so much light. And so I'm not sure what detail is gonna be there after I work it in Lightroom, but I'm excited about the potential. The foreground object of the temple and the glowing building next to the Milky Way or underneath the Milky Way right there is a pretty cool shot. So. I'm excited to take off. It is 2.57, so we've already lost an hour of our time here, and it was definitely worth it. So I'm excited to see where I go next. I'm gonna head further south and head out of the light pollution and capture a really crisp, crisp Milky Way. I am about to Goshen right now, heading through Janola. 
And in a previous Votog adventure, we came through this area and we saw a water source that was pretty still. And I haven't yet captured an astrophotography shot with reflection of stars in water below the sky. To double the sky with a reflected water source, that's awesome. I haven't done it before and I'm really excited to see if I can get it in this shot. If I'm remembering correctly and it's over here on the left and it has a very still water source today, I'm gonna capture there. I just hope that it's not behind a fence that I can't get to. Well, there's my water feature, but I'm not sure I can pull in anywhere. I didn't bring any water socks. I didn't bring anything good for walking out into what looks like a swamp. <sighs> so I think what I'll do is I'll capture one image just to see how much it reflects the stars and move along. That turned out awesome. I did not expect it to turn out so well. Now, I was hoping for more reflection in the water, but I didn't get that. I have some lights that are off in the distance that are reflecting in the water, but I don't have the stars in the water. I seem to have some color from the sky, maybe even from the stars that are that's in the water, but I don't have any real reflection of the Milky Way sitting in this water, which is unfortunate, but I love the shot. Despite not having a foreground element that was breaking any planes, it wasn't going up, it wasn't a vertical feature in front of me in the, in the foreground to offer something that broke up the uh, foreground from being just flat. But using my new flashlight that was recommended to me by David Kingham, not personally, but he recommended it in his book. If you want to get into Milky Way photography, definitely get the book Nightscapes. Now where I'm heading, I'm gonna go through Eureka and I'm gonna go around and landscape photography with the sunrise might be awesome there as I can get some really cool contrast between a foreground mountain. Here goes a rabbit. Oh, oh. all on GoPro too. Ugh. Funny story, back in high school, I took a girl out on a date. We were driving out to I don't remember where, but it required us to leave the city, go out towards the mountains. We were meeting people out there. I don't know where it was after all. And I hit a cat. And when I hit that cat, the surprise and the horror of accidentally killing a cat, which I didn't want to do, made me kind of yelp. I kind of went, ah! instead of just, whoa, hey, hit a cat. I went, ah! and she made fun of me the rest of that day. Man, this morning has been one of the most successful astrophotography mornings that I've had, I think, ever. Every other time I've gone out, I've gotten great shots, but I've gotten maybe two, three great shots of the same place. Usually you don't have time to go to too many places. This morning has been fantastic. I've gone to a very well-lit temple in a city and captured the Milky Way, which I believe potentially looks good. Let's show the image up right now to see if it is looking good. Probably, my guess is that the Milky Way will be a little faded, not as much detail, and maybe even a bit noisy as I try and bring it out from what I took. But I also had a shot over water, a great Milky Way, not in a completely light pollutionless area, but definitely out there in a rural area that looks a lot better. And now this one, oh man, check out this last shot. We saw this building on a Photog adventure that wasn't recorded a couple weeks ago. Yeah, I think it was just one week ago. 
and we saw it in the distance when the sun was rising and wondered, wow, we got to get over there and take a shot of that. This morning, as I left the water area and drove towards Eureka, I was really guessing where I wanted to go. I had no idea where I should be going. I couldn't get any signal on my phone out here, so I couldn't check the map to see if there was a place that was obvious that I should go. So I just started driving with faith that I'd find something. And I remember when I got to this road that we saw this tall silo building further down this road. And so we had to go see. I had to go see if I could find it. I only had 20 minutes before the sun was starting to start rising over the curve of the earth and starting the astronomical dawn, which means the pitch black sky goes to a lighter shade of black to blue. Oh man, interesting building, old, tall. This is what I'm talking about. I wanted something that would break the plane. The horizon wasn't gonna be just the single line in the image. I was getting a vertical line that was breaking through the horizon and bringing an awesome point of interest right in front of me. This is what's so fun about Photog Adventures is that you're scouting, it's fun. If you capture a shot that is actually worthwhile putting in your portfolio, awesome. If it isn't, who cares? You had fun making that shot and getting the opportunity to go out and take a photo, wow. You gotta consider yourself lucky when you can make time, get out there, and go take a shot. So if you've enjoyed being along with this Vogue Dog adventure, please like this video and subscribe. We appreciate all your support. Thank you so much and stay tuned for another Vogue Dog adventure.